Good day, my name is Tian Hilnes, and in this video I would like to discuss another one of the end time symbols that we do not actually think is an end time symbol, and that is the unicorn as an end time symbol. We have to see what the Bible says will happen in these end times, my brother and sister, and we must take note of the fact that the enemy also uses certain symbols in these end times. What does he want to do with these symbols? He wants to pull a veil over the eyes of the believers so that we do not understand what is happening around us. So we must go back to the word of God at all times, read what the Bible says, and then stand up for the truth of the word of God. Because my brother and sister, remember, it's always about our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us pray together first. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you in this day. Thank you, Lord. We know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know you're here where we're busy with this production, but you will also be there where people will be watching this video. And we pray that you alone will be glorified. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, Lord, but that your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me, and that we will all be willing to receive the truth of the Word of God. And thank you, Father, that you give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. This is holy ground where we're busy with this video, wherever it might be. And you will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God, and you will live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood, that you will set up your angels all around every place where we're busy with this video, and that you yourself will be a wall of fire around about your children, so that every place is a safe place. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now by your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All who know me know I always start with this verse in the King James Version that I use in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. That means, my brother and sister, we can read the Bible as it is written. What it says is what it means, and then we must become obedient to the word of God. Because in Matthew 22, verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And that is the problem with most of us Christians. We err not knowing the scriptures. And why do we not know our scriptures? Because we do not know the author of the scriptures. We are not in a personal, intimate relationship with him. So what happens? We make mistakes. We are deceived. We are pulled away by the enemy in many instances and we allow things in our homes that are not from God and we wonder what's going on when all hell breaks loose in our lives or in our children's lives. I also have a YouTube video with the title Fable. What is a fable? That you can also go and watch where I give much more detail regarding fables that we bring into our lives and our children's lives. But today I want to discuss this little creature that we all know as a unicorn. And the moment that I use the word unicorn, what immediately springs to mind? Exactly what you see on the slide there now. A horse with a horn in the middle of its head. When I use the word unicorn, you will not think about any other animal with a horn in the middle of its head. You will always think about a horse with that horn in the middle of its head. And that is what we associate the unicorn with. This is the well-known symbol throughout the world of the unicorn, namely a horse, nothing else, a horse with a horn between its eyes. But let us now see what some other authors also research. And I always give credit to the work of other authors that I use in my research. This author writes, God declares in Daniel chapter 8 that the symbol of Alexander the Great shall be a unicorn. Bible scholars have long maintained that the speed and ease with which Alexander conquered the then known world is symbolic of the way the Antichrist of the end of the age will conquer the world. The terminology used to describe Alexander is exceedingly close to that used to describe Antichrist. Further, in chapter 8, verse 19, God tells us that, Behold, I will make you know what will be in the latter time. 
for it has to do with the time of the end. And so we read in Daniel 8 verse 5, And as I was considering, behold, and he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And if you do Bible study and study prophetic word in the Bible, you will also know that specific goat referred to Alexander the Great that came upon the earth and the way that he also conquered the then known world with very much speed and ease until he died at a very young age. But the thing is, he was symbolized by a goat with a notable horn between his eyes. Thus, Bible scholars have known for a long, long time that one of the symbols assigned to Antichrist is the unicorn. Therefore, we should have no difficulty realizing that the occult, satanic world has depicted Antichrist as a unicorn. The only difference, my brother and sister, that you will see on this video is that they depict him as a horse with a horn between his eyes, not the goat, because the goat was the symbol of Alexander the Great, but he was the forerunner, he was the shadow that we will see in the end of the times that the Antichrist uses the symbol of the horse with the horn between his eyes. Thus we see that the horse unicorn, I only put it in brackets there, the word horse, so that you can always differentiate as to what I'm referring to. So you know, we all grew up, when you heard the voice unicorn, you grew up believing it's a horse with a horn between its eyes. So this is the symbol that is used throughout the world as a symbol of the Antichrist. Thus we see that the horse unicorn is in reality the symbol of a future conqueror who will bring peace to the earth. Who is this but the Antichrist, for whom the world waits, unaware of his true nature? Because remember, initially the world's going to think he has all the answers for the world. And the Bible says the whole world will wander after him. The word for Antichrist in Greek is Antichristos. It means an opponent of the Messiah, Antichrist. So he will be an opponent of the Messiah. He will not be the Messiah, but many, many cultures, many religions are waiting for a Messiah. You and I who know who we are in Christ, knowing we are waiting for the return of the true Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Speaking of one horned, that's what unicorn literally means. Borrowed into English by the early 1200s from French, Unicorn comes from the Latin unicornis, having one horn. This root joins uni, meaning one, and cornu, horn. In other words, my brother and sister, a unicorn is not specifically a horse with a single horn. Yet, I repeat, we all grew up and we were all shown the unicorn as one specific being throughout the ages, a horse with a horn. So that's why we know there is a hidden meaning behind the horse. Why is the horse with the horn being shown to the world for ages? Because it is the symbol of the Antichrist and we never knew that. The horn growing out of the horse unicorn's head represents the third eye or the all-seeing eye. Now, people who come from the occult will understand what this is all about that people use their third eye to see in the spiritual realm. This tells us the truly satanic symbol of the unicorn, when its horn is stated to be the third eye or all-seeing eye, both of which are tightly tied to the worship of Lucifer in the original Egyptian mysteries religion. We first need to understand how important symbolism is to the occultist. What is a magical symbol? This comes from an occult book that this author bought in an occult bookstore. This is what the occultist says a magical symbol is. 
The true magic symbol is an image which hides an inner meaning. This meaning is usually cunningly hidden behind a form which most people think they can understand immediately. So most people think if they look at the horse unicorn, oh, it's a cute little animal, it's a fantasy animal, there's nothing wrong with this thing. You see, it is cunningly hidden behind a form which most people think they can understand immediately. And the Webster's Dictionary says, a symbol is something that stands for or suggests something else by reason of relationship, association, convention. A visible sign of something invisible. Christian author Constance Camby writes that certain symbols were to be particularly effective in preparing the world for the Antichrist. Some symbols, certain symbols, were to be particularly effective in preparing the world for the Antichrist. She writes, New Age symbols. You see, the New Age symbols are the symbols used to depict the Antichrist in most of the instances. New Age symbols such as the rainbow, Pegasus, the flying horse, the horse unicorn, the all-seeing eye of Freemasonry, and triple sixes were to be increasingly displayed. And so people will say, but the rainbow is the symbol of God. That's what God gave to Noah. Yes, but Satan comes and he twists scripture and he uses some of these symbols with hidden meanings. The horse unicorn here is once again a symbol of transformation. Now this comes from a quote also by an occult author. The horse unicorn here is once again a symbol of transformation. For this unicorn seeks a better world through, now look at how this unicorn seeks a better world, through the purifying purgative powers of destruction. Is that our Messiah? No, but that's what the Antichrist is going to come and cause when he appears on the world scene. Its purpose, like that of the Hindu god Shiva or Shiva, is to tear down and to renew. In both European and Oriental traditions, the horse unicorn is identified with a Messiah. Look at that, not the Messiah, with a Messiah, who comes when the world is in danger and who heralds the coming of a new and better age. In other words, he is a Messiah of the new age. And that new age has also been known for many, many, many decades as the age of Aquarius. And look at those two little symbols I have at the bottom there. Who is symbolized as Aquarius? The horse unicorn, a symbol of that new age, a better age, the age of Aquarius. And Revelation 13 verse 3 says, And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And that beast is the Antichrist. And the Greek word for wonder is thavmazo. And the word means to wonder by implication to admire, have in admiration, marvel or wonder. The whole world will wonder after him and they will admire him because he will be the man with all the answers for these pestilences and these famines and all these things until the, the day that he stands up and declares himself to be God and that people must worship him. I discuss it on my YouTube video on Jesus is coming again, the rapture and the second coming of our Lord Jesus. In Celtic mythology and European folklore, a fabulous beast comes in the form of a horse with a single spiraling horn growing from the center of its brow. In alchemy, it is a symbol of the complete mastery of phallic sexuality by ritual intercourse and its conversion into the forces of pure visualization. Wonderful! Do you want your child to subliminally be conditioned to the horn of the unicorn as a phallic symbol of intercourse? 
What are we allowing in our homes through our lack of knowledge, my brother and sister? That is why Isaiah 4 verse 6 says, My people perish or are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This sexual overtone is also encountered in the wearing of horse unicorn amulets and charms. This person, the author of the complete book of amulets and talismans, explains that the unicorn amulet is a traditional symbol of fertility and sexuality. The unicorn is worn by those who desire to increase their sexual magnetism. Manly Palmer Hall, who was a 33rd degree Freemason in his monumental work, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, said this concerning the unicorn. The single horn of the unicorn may represent the pineal gland or third eye, which is the spiritual cognition center in the brain. The unicorn was adopted by the mysteries as a symbol of the illumined spiritual nature of the initiate, in other words, the Freemasonry initiate, the horn with which it defends itself being the flaming sword of the spiritual doctrine against which nothing can prevail. And I also have a YouTube video on are Freemasons really free that you can go and watch to see that Freemasonry is not just an organization, it is actually a religion that thinks that it supersedes all other religions and that's why they will use the unicorn as a symbol of the spiritual nature of the initiate because people are being deceived by what they do. To the contrary, Deuteronomy 7 verse 25 and 26 says in the Bible, the graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. So many people say, Tian, but I think this unicorn is so cute and my daughter thinks it's so cute and my mother thinks it's so cute and my pastor thinks it's so cute. I don't care if they think it's cute. What does God think about it? Because God says the graven images of their gods and the unicorn is worshipped in other religions. It's given acknowledgement as a divine kind of being and you must burn it with fire. You must destroy it. If you cannot burn that thing Break it up, cut it up, or get just get rid of it. It is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. You shall utterly detest it. You shall utterly abhor it, the Bible says, for it is a cursed thing. But then people quickly say to me, but Tian, we read in the King James Version the word unicorn is used. Yes, six times. I actually give you the verses there now. You can read it for yourself. In Numbers 23 verse 22, God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Numbers 24 verse 8, God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Job 39 verse 9, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Job 39 verse 10, canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Psalm 29 verse 6, he maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. Psalm 92 verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And people say, see, even the King James refers to the unicorn. Unfortunately, there was just a little mistake in the translation here. Because the Hebrew word used in every one of those verses is rehem. And it means a wild bull from its conspicuousness. Unicorn. And so we also read in this article on Lost in Translation, it was in the 3rd century BCE that the unicorn entered religious texts, although only by accident. Between 300 and 200 BCE, a group of 70 scholars gathered together to create the first translation of the Hebrew Old Testament in Koine Greek. Although the Hebrew term for unicorn is chad keren, meaning one horn, in the text commonly known as Septuagint, and the word Septuagint means 70 because it's the 70 scholars that translated it, 
The scholars made an error when translating the Hebrew term rechem ox from Psalms as monokeros. In effect, they changed the word ox to unicorn. So unicorn is not written in the Bible, my brother and sister. The unicorn's inclusion in a text of such magnitude, meaning the Old Testament, laid the foundation for an obsession with the creature that thrived in both literary and visual arts from the earliest dates of the Middle Ages and continues to the modern day. But again, is it possible that there could be a bull with a single horn between his eyes? I believe so. Because there is a picture for you. And this article I found on the internet about a bizarre image of a unique bull with a horn like a unicorn. No, it's not like a unicorn. The moment that it has one horn, it is a unicorn. Uni, single, cornu, horn, remember? So, a bizarre image of a unique bull with a horn like a unicorn growing out of the center of his head has emerged online. Generally born with two horns that curve outwards in a flat arc as they grow on either side of their head, a Brazilian bull named Diamond is a little different. Instead, the muscular brown bull has one thick horn growing upright in between his eyes. And you know what? The Bible actually also says what has been will be again. So, that bull in the Bible might have been a bull with one horn between his eyes, a unicorn. If they did that as such, but we know now it was actually lost in translation. It is a wild bull. And normally a wild bull has two horns. But I repeat, the horse unicorn is the symbol of the Antichrist. Here's another one. A picture of a sheep with one horn. A lucky family in Australia has what might be the closest thing to a real life unicorn in their backyard. An Australian sheep managed to evade slaughter because of the unicorn styled horn in the middle of his head. Michael Foster, a stock agent from southern Australia, said he was checking out a stock of sheep near his hometown in Burra when he discovered the unique animal. And again, they say the closest thing to a real life unicorn in their backyard. That is a unicorn. It is an animal with a single horn. A single horn is a unicorn. The problem is the horse unicorn, my brother and sister. And I also went and did some research on whether any horse skulls were ever discovered with a horn in the middle of the head. And I could not find any, but I found this thing. And remember, people still believe in the evolution. But this article referred to the Siberian unicorn. For decades, scientists have estimated that the Siberian unicorn, a long extinct species of mammal that looked more like a rhino than a horse, died out some 350,000 years ago. Now, you and I who know what the Bible says, we know that the earth is 6,000 years old, but in any case, this is what they believe. But a beautifully preserved skull found in Kazakhstan in 2016, that's five years ago, has completely overturned that assumption. Turns out these incredible creatures were still around as recently as 29,000 years ago, they say. But this is a skull that was found in Kazakhstan and it was of the Siberian unicorn. It's a being which is in that instance more a rhino than a horse. So that skull was the skull of a rhino type of animal that lived in the past 6,000 years, whenever it might have been, they say 29,000 years. We know that's not true. But the thing is, that is a skull that was unearthed with a horn in the middle of its head. And it was not a horse. Now, let us look at the horse unicorn. Because it is such a beautiful being, they say. It's such a cute thing. And you have all these beautiful uh, paintings all over people's houses of these horse unicorns. Well, it represents the moon in astrology. And it's a symbol of rebirth or reincarnation from Roman mythology. Reincarnation is people who believe that they can come back in a second life or more. Whereas Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, 
but after this, the judgment. So there is no such thing as reincarnation, my brother and sister. But again, in the new age and in Buddhism and in Hinduism, reincarnation is believed in quite strongly. And that is why the horse unicorn is a symbol of the new age, is a symbol of the Antichrist. Because remember, the Bible also says, he will, it will look like he died and then he will be resurrected. It's a symbol of reincarnation. In this article, I read the following. Throughout history, the stunning horse unicorn has captured the imaginations of human beings far and wide. The Greeks, Babylonians and Persians, among others, gave the unicorn the symbolism and meaning of mysticism, magic, health and purity. And remember the Bible says, Magic is an abomination to the Lord. Because of this creature's horn, unicorns represent the male energies in all their potency, again referring to sexuality and sexual intercourse. The male penis, in other words, that is what it's actually referring to. Not to be outdone, the unicorn also has associations with the moon, as we just saw earlier, which is feminine and instinctive. Unicorns are the most magical of all fantasy spirit animals. These are now the people in the occult world believing in fantasy spirit animals, which is nothing else than Satan's demons. They can move easily between the realms. In this ability, unicorn represents stretching our imagination and vision to places it's never been before. Legend has it that unicorn, now look at this, what they say in their own writings. Legend has it that Unicorn is also a master of shape-shifting and can at will become anything, even a human. So beware of unicorns in disguise. Now who is that shape-shifter? 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 and 15 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed. And that word transformed also means changes form or shape shifts into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. My brother and sister, can you see there's a veil over our eyes with this beautiful creature, this fantasy animal that we allow into our homes, the symbol of that thing lying on my child's bed or on, on his duvet or her duvet or in the room or hanging on, in, on the post or on the wall, that kind of thing. Yet we're opening the door for Satan to say, but you're allowing my symbols in your house. So if you're allowing my symbols in your house, you are allowing me and my demons to also come into your house and have free reign in your house. And as I said, I discussed this in much detail on my video of, on regarding fables and also my other videos that we have on YouTube on house cleaning about the things that we bring into our homes that you go and, can go and watch for yourself because it gives place to the devil and the Bible says give no place to the devil but you see they are so cute so we bring these the newest and most adorable unicorn toys for kids into our homes there's a little chair for a young kid or a toddler to sit on in the arms of the unicorn or these unicorn playthings but you know it gets much worse actually these days you can also buy unicorn poop for your children unicorn dung super cool poopy slime they call it oh it's so cute and it's so nice you know it's made of chocolate and it's made of sugar and all these things but it's dung it is an animal's dung. You want your children to eat animal dung, but it's cute. It is transformed, you see. Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And my brother and sister, you buy this for your children? You really think it's okay for the Lord if you buy things for your children that actually refers to the dung of an animal? But they're so cute, you see. And if you look at that picture on the bottom right hand side, there you have the New Age rainbow and you have the unicorn and you see that unicorn actually just pooped and its, it's poop shines, you see, it glitters. 
It's so cute. It's so acceptable to the world. And if you look at that rainbow, we also know that rainbow is also the rainbow and the colors of the LGBTQ community. And there you have a picture on the top left hand side of three men wearing unicorns. The middle one has a unicorn hat on. The two other ones have unicorns hanging around their necks with the horn of the unicorn very, very strategically placed in front of them. And as we said, what does the unicorn's horn refer to? Male sexuality. Then we have a picture there in the middle of a pillow, queer queen. Top right hand side there, super gay. Bottom low left hand side, I'm not gay, I'm super gay. And then there's an article that I found on the uh, internet. The unicorn, LGBTQ icon of our time. RuPaul says, now RuPaul is an American drag queen. Always be yourself unless you can be a unicorn. See, the unicorn is a symbol also of homosexuality and lesbianism in these end times, my brother and sister. What is it also a symbol of? Another animal symbol commonly seen in pharmaceutical branding is the horse, unicorn. It was first mentioned by the ancient Greeks as a symbol of purity and grace, whose spiraling horn had the power to heal, especially as an antidote to poisons, really. Can a horn heal? And there is enough information on the internet where kings and, and uh, other people bought these horns, believing it to be unicorn horns, and so that they could grind it down and put it in their food so that they will not be poisoned by the enemies, etc., etc. But in many instances, those horns came from a fish called the narwhal. The narwhal has a horn in the middle of its head. You can go and uh, do your own research regarding that fish. And many times it was that horn and the people were not actually safe from being poisoned by the horn. And because a horn cannot heal you, only God can heal so my brother and sister, what should you and I do with these symbols we have in our homes? Exodus 23 verse 24 says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. We must get rid of these things, my brother and sister. We cannot keep it in our homes. And I repeat Deuteronomy 7 verse 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. You see, even that unicorn poop, it glitters. It's like gold. It's like silver. No, thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it's a cursed thing. And people say to me, but yeah, that's in the Old Testament. It's still applicable to us, my brother and sister, because God says in Malachi 3 verse 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So if our God said yesterday, 2,000, 4,000 years ago to his people, you shall not bring these things into your house. You must burn it with fire, destroy it, break it down, utterly overthrow it. It's the same God. He's still the same God that created heaven and earth. He's still the same God that was with Israel in the desert. He's still the same God that was with Paul in the New Testament. He's still the same God with us today, and he will be the same God in all eternity. He has spoken, and he does not have to repeat himself in the New Testament, because there is a well-known saying that in the Old Testament, the New Testament is concealed. And in the New Testament, the Old Testament is revealed. So we must stand on the truth of the word of God. God has never changed. We cannot allow these symbols of the kingdom of darkness into our homes and think they are so cute, my brother and sister. You will have to make a decision regarding the unicorn. And I specifically, I specifically mean the horse unicorn 
in your house and in your child's room. It is a decision to make. But remember, we are not in a dead relationship. We are in a living relationship with a living God because Jesus is not a dead God. You see, we were so busy with dead religion in the past. We were never getting into a relationship with Jesus. But if you and I are in, are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, then we must know He is a living God because He says in Revelation 1, verse 17 and 18, I'm the first and the last. I'm He that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, that we know we are awaiting the coming of the true Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have that blessed hope, Lord, as it is written in Titus 2 verse 13. So we keep on looking out for your coming, Lord Jesus. But we also see that the enemy tries to deceive the people using symbols of the kingdom of darkness to pull veils over the people's eyes. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will take this message and just tear off those veils from the eyes of the children of God, that they will not allow these symbols from the kingdom of darkness in their homes so that you alone can be glorified in the homes of your children. Lord and Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know your coming is very close at hand. So we keep on crying out, come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha, the Spirit and the Bride say, come, for we love you, Lord. Amen.